I will speak about uh, big data for longevity uh, at the European level, but also at other levels, and also how to share big data, because for me this is a central question. First, a reminder about a few facts concerning longevity. The first one is today, like every day, about 120,000 people will die of old age. So it's about 90% of all deaths in rich countries, like Israel, for example, here is the life expectancy about 82 years, but also in the world, and uh, it's about 70%, and even in the poorest countries in the world, yeah. it's still yeah. the majority of that uh, are coming from old age. Uh, and to take just uh, the neighboring uh, uh, country, so in Palestine, for example, it's 74 years, so not so bad. You probably know that uh, we die only of, uh, we, we die of causes of death uh, are related to aging, most causes of uh, uh, involuntary death and uh, yeah. So you all know that uh, the average lifespan is uh, increasing, increasing, but many often we, uh, we forget that the maximal lifespan is not increasing. So the first uh, person to reach 100 years, uh, she died more than 2,000 years ago. She was uh, Terencia, the widow of uh, Cicero. And there is again the echo. <laughs> again the echo. Um, so the oldest woman ever, as far as we know, was Jeanne Dalmont. She died when she was uh, 122 years old. And today, the oldest woman is only 116 years, and she lives in Spain. And the oldest man in the world is 113 and lives in Venezuela. So there are many uh, reasons to be not so optimistic uh, for the coming uh, months. Uh, for the first time since, for the coming months and the coming years even, for the first time, uh, uh, since uh, World War II, uh, the, there is a decrease of life expectancy at the global level. And it's not a small decrease, so you have the, the numbers there. And uh, I just recently uh, saw concerning statistics that even at the European Union level, it's uh, decreasing for the ter second, uh, uh, second year in a row. So this means that for the first time, of, let's say, the modern times, uh, we have a disconnection between technological progress and level of wellness and level of life expectancy. This is, uh, yeah, in a way depressing, but also quite interesting uh, to know. There are also reasons to be optimistic. So we learned with COVID to work online and we, we, we are working more than ever online together, even if there are still technical problem, pro problems like we see to, today. We are more interconnected than ever. And maybe most important point, <coughs> life has never been so precious culturally, especially concerning all people. And AI is going fast and AGI is maybe approaching. We are not speaking about that uh, today. I think that it is very probably possible to find a treatment against aging within 15 to 30 years, but it will be Probably, except if uh, uh, AI is uh, progressing fast enough, uh, pro uh, complicated and expensive. Now, coming to the central point, uh, central aspect of uh, this uh, discussion is uh, uh, facts about big data for health. A few facts about big data for health, uh, if this. So, uh, where is the information? So you have a lot of information in the scientific literature, you have a lot of information in your smartphone at the moment for more than 4 billion people. Uh, also in the administrations, medical institutions, it's, uh, there are people who say that 30% uh, of all big data is health big data. So, for example, we have about 500,000 healthcare apps in all app stores of the world, but as far as I know, zero public space to share health data for all, or at least zero uh, really public space working. So that means 
we have enough, and this is very important. The problem is not to have enough health data. The problem is to have enough health data that we can reach and that we can share to know which human clinical trials should be started immediately, to know which uh, existing drugs have very probably positive longevity effects but also negative longevity effects for small longevity progress and to prepare uh, big breakthroughs. Now, the legal and also the, the de facto uh, situation in most countries uh, of the world, we can summarize this as uh, you have the obligation to uh, to share, yeah, you have the obligation to share, how can I assume now this? I will enable more, work, pop, pop, no, I will never do that. So, I, <laughs> so you, you could summarize this as, uh, okay, <laughs> technology. You, if you want to use a service of uh, private companies or even public entities, you are obliged to use, uh, uh, to, to sell the data or to give the data to them and you are not uh, allowed to uh, use it again. So in no country with the tools that we have at the moment, uh, nobody is allowed to be really the uh, owner of the data and uh, in fact you are not allowed to share it with scientists. And even if you decide to share it with scientists, the scientists will have problems if they use your data and even if scientists decide to use your data, they will probably not be able to have their finding, findings published. What can we then do for a few possible open, open solutions? First, I want to say that there is, especially in Europe, and probably Israel, I don't know, but especially in Europe, you have this idea that health data is sensitive. Well, of course it's sensitive, but it's less sensitive than uh, your political life, your sex life, uh, much of your private life, and it will be, it would be less risky if the health system is public and if health data are not to be sold. So, what for me an ideal world would be a world with patent left or at least no patent uh, for work with, made with uh, public money to facilitate sharing, sharing of data to have the publication of negative results because uh, companies who are selling their products when they fail in their experiments they don't publish the, publish the results and to have also research, research outside the uh, patent, patentable fields. We should also constantly uh, remind that most people, they are, uh, they were Poles uh, in Belgium, in Europe and countries, uh, most people are willing to share health data for scientific and medical goals. When you ask them, they, they are just afraid that uh, it's going to be sell, sold to companies or that it's going to be used against them. But for scientific research, they are always in favor. And that, that's for specifically for uh, Europe, that GDPR, so the general the, the data protection of, uh, regulation and other rules of privacy are not above fundamental human rights and must be compatible with them and especially of course the right to health. We could share uh, information with, with uh, private organizations like the International Longevity Organization uh, but you have to be very careful of nice words in this organization about open sharing. Very often, sadly, uh, it's called open, but it's not open. We could uh, also think about support work for um, sharing data at the level of the WHO, so the World Health Organization. The problem is they are not uh, working uh, uh, enough to share health data. And somebody here told me this morning they don't have uh, money also, and that's one of the, the reasons uh, no research is not, not enough research is made. So yes, uh, so um, we should work at the European level, not only because I'm European, <laughs> but uh, because they have a, a beautiful project called. Uh, uh, this is a regulation who, no, sorry, this is a project of regulation who is already uh, almost one year old. Uh, and it is a regulation for what's called the European Health Data Space with uh, four 
ID is very positive, interconnectivity of databases, uh, head databases of course, the concept of what they call altruist databases, it means that uh, the information you bring there, the information you take there, cannot be used uh, uh, to be sold or to be, uh, um, so, so cannot be used for commercial goals and of course can be shared with uh, scientists, otherwise it's not really interesting. Uh, let's say the, the main problem of this uh, regulation is that democratic uh, organizations, especially uh, democratic European organizations, are not very uh, fast. The most uh, spectacular example concerning time also is the fact that uh, Europe decided already, I think, six years ago to suppress summer time, you know, and uh, it's still not done. So even for very, very simple things, it uh, takes time. Of course, I, I was surprised, today we didn't speak about this uh, yet. Uh, we should use artificial intelligence. We know that things are going very, very fast. We should use the artificial intelligence uh, on the positive side, I would say, for healthy longevity, but also on the let's say, negative side, because other uh, use of artificial intelligence, uh, of artificial general intelligence, could be very dangerous. So it's also against uh, uh, risk, against existential risks. So because other pro pro priorities are more dangerous. And maybe AGI will not suffer for what's called mortality salience or terror management theory or over the way speaks about dead trans. The fact that when we try to uh, fight to uh, yeah to, to decrease uh, aging, people are kind of uh, afraid of the idea. Uh, because at the moment we don't have any choice and so the best way uh, to uh, to be uh, able to cope with this situation is to think that uh, not, get, not uh, getting old uh, is not a positive thing. However, however uh, we have to be very careful concerning uh, artificial intelligence. So the best AI in the world cannot yet considerably enhance your health and AI is still extraordinarily stupid, dangerous in some areas. So I'm coming from the uh, conclusion. So we need reliable shared big health data, fast clinical tests and more research. We need a sense of urgency, use of AGI. What we propose uh, for uh, HEALS is to create a system trusted by citizens, managed by a public institution or an NGO, where by default, so it means opt-out, that's important but I don't have time to explain, uh, all health data, anonymized or pseudonymized, can be used for scientific research and not for any other use to start clinical tests uh, as soon as possible to enable everyone wishing it to live a radically longer and healthier lives. Share your uh, health uh, big data, that's what you can do. You can share and it's not your uh, health big data, it's health big data. You could uh, also start trials on animals, start clinical trials on all well-informed volunteers. No, or support this. And I want to thank you and also a few people were asking me what's uh, uh, going on about uh, one of the projects that uh, Hills is supporting at the moment uh, uh, concerning uh, uh, the Juven uh, Foundation and this very old trust, so ask me privately after that. Hills uh, is publishing a newsletter in five languages, it's uh, uh, making advocacy of course at the Belgian level, European level, but also international and supporting financial, financially uh, research and organizing conferences. Not as good as uh, what Ilya is organizing, of course, but not bad always. Thank you and uh, the last thing, don't hesitate to write to me uh, if you have uh, uh, negative comments or even if you have positive comments. Thank you. or otherwise it is all in the book. So, thank you, thank you so much.